Welcome to the SAGE online registration training video. We have added a number of features to the My Profile portal to assist SAGE groups with their online event registration using our system. Things we've added have been reports, the ability to edit registrations, as well as the ability to generate receipts. Today, we're gonna to go over a number of those features and describe how to use them. We've also added some extra pages to My Profile. When anyone logs into My Profile during the registration period leading up to MTS PD Day, they will be presented with a page with direct links for registering for any of the MTS PD Day events. For Sage executives, when they log into My Profile, we'll have the Sage helpline number display for them for easy reference. What we'll cover today is how to access the reports that we've developed, highlight what information is in the reports briefly, talk about how to modify the payment status of registrations and delete registrations. We'll also talk a little bit about how to test your event using the testing scripts provided. To access the reports, the first thing you wanna do is log into My Profile. The My Profile link is available on our homepage, www.mbteach.org. Once you click on that, you'll be able to log in using either your MTS number or username and a password. Note that there are options on the right-hand side of that uh, in case you have forgotten your login name or your MTS number, as well as forgotten your password, and these are automated process for getting that information to your email. There is also an option here for people registering for your event that is called Sign Up Now. Once you log in as a Sage executive, you'll have an option underneath of Make Changes that is called Sage Conference Information. This is available by default to all Sage executives in your group unless you have notified the society that you would like only a specific number of your executive to have access to this page. Once you click on that, you'll be directed to the conference information page, which is a little small on the type here, but you can see that the links here are highlighted for the two different reports that are available to you. The report is generated in a comma separated values file, uh, which is compatible with Excel and most other spreadsheet programs. And the information in these reports are always current. The moment a registration is completed, that registration will appear within both of the reports. Now, what information is stored in each of these reports? The current SAGE registrants has a number of sections. First being member information, which will have the name of the person, their member number, the division and school where they work, and any phones and emails that we have in our system. Note, this is only the most up-to-date information that we have received in our membership system, and so there may be gaps in this information. You also see the payment information, how much they paid, the payment reference, and what is their payment status. You'll see the registration information, what date and time did they register for the event, which role did they choose, and which track did they select. We also have event question responses. You can ask a number of questions on your event and the responses to those questions that you choose will be in this report in that section. Similarly, you can describe the number of sessions or what sessions you have available in your program and the registrants session choices will appear in this report as well. We have added a special field called schedule uh, a number of years ago. And what this field contains is a brief summary of which sessions the registrant has chosen and the times that those sessions begin. This can be used to answer questions coming from registrants uh, if they wish to be reminded of which sessions they have chosen. And you can also use this field to print a schedule on name tags if you're generating name tags for your attendees. The second report, the current payment information report, has much less information than the SAGE registrant report. Here you get the member information, the registration information, and the payment information. Now modifying the registrations through the My Profile site. First option you have is to change a registrant to not paid yet. 
This is typically used after you've issued a refund to a registrant. To do this, you enter their MTS number, and this can be taken off of either of the reports that we just described. So I recommend opening one of those reports first and copying and pasting the member number if of the registrant that you wish to modify. Once you enter the member number, you select the action you which, which wish to perform, which in this case is switching them to not paid yet. After you click submit, then you will be shown a page describing the person that you're modifying. This is because you are making changes to the database, so you want to confirm that you're modifying the correct registrant. So when this appears, you want to review the name and other information for this registrant just to make sure that you are changing the right person. Once you click yes, then the information is updated. You can also change the payment status to paid as another action on every registrant. This is used if you have received the money in some other way other than online payment. So if you've taken cash or checks, or if you received a check from a division to cover the registration of a number of attendees. So you'd use this to modify their not paid status to make it paid once you have received payment. Once you choose the member number and enter the action to be paid, a number of other fields appear on the web page. You can enter a payment reference, which you can use to describe the check number, when it was received, or other information. You also have the option to issue a receipt here for this manually changing someone to paid. So you can say, yes, I want to send the email receipt. What's the name of the payee on that email? And what email address do you want it to be sent to? This can be used if a member wishes for you to send them a receipt a second time. If they have already paid, and they want to receive another receipt, you can use this system to first mark them as not paid, then immediately switch them to paid and choose yes to issue the receipt again. That way the system will generate a new receipt email. Should be noted that when anyone registers online, they automatically get the receipt from the system. They also automatically get a receipt from PayPal once their payment is completed. This can be used for some groups to use the payment confirmation from PayPal that the group receives to forward to a registrant who is requesting to receive a receipt for their payment. You can use that method or this method here with changing to not paid and then back to paid again that I just described. Again, once you hit submit on here, it brings up a confirmation page to make sure that you are modifying the correct registrant. It also has a warning at the bottom that the amount received must match the fee paid. The system doesn't allow you to accept partial payments in that when you're marking some registrant as paid, the full payment fee must be received before changing the payment status. Once you click let, yes, they are updated. And if you chose yes to issue a receipt, then a receipt will be emailed to them. Another option you have is to delete a registration. This is usually used to remove a registration after someone has canceled their registration. This is a key point that you have to note that a canceled registrant are still holding spots and sessions until you decide to dis delete the registration. This is sometimes kept uh, in the possibility that somebody accidentally canceled the registration. So it's important that when you receive a cancellation email from the system that you go in, issue a refund if one is warranted, mark the person as not paid if they had previously paid, and then delete the registration to free up those spots in those sessions. Again, once you hit submit, there's a confirmation page to make sure you're updating the right person. The last option in terms of the actions is to view registration. This allows you to look up what sessions a registrant has chosen and what their answers were to session questions. Once you enter the member number and select view registration, you hit submit and you'll see the registration confirmation page that will show them, show you what role they selected, what tracks they selected, which sessions they selected, and if they answered any event questions, the answers to those questions. Cancellation notifications. When a registrant cancels the registration, 
you may or may not need to issue a refund. So what the system will do is send you an email of anyone who has canceled the registration so that you can review and determine whether a refund is necessary or not. Here's an image of what that email looks like. In this case, you can see the payment status in this email is not paid yet. So this is a situation where you would not need to issue a refund and you could go in immediately and delete this registrant uh, from your event so that they are no longer taking up spaces in sessions. If the fee was paid, then you need to determine if a refund is necessary. And if so, go into PayPal and issue the refund, then change the payment status to not paid yet, followed by deleting the registration. The easiest scenario is if no payment has been received yet, then you can just simply delete the registration. Note that this cancellation email will be sent to you daily as long as there are canceled registrations in your event. We also have an option to have a reminder for unpaid registrants to pay. The system can send a reminder to an unpaid registrant a specific number of days after they registered if they have not paid yet. You can identify the time that it takes before this a warning or reminder is issued, and then you would let me know how long after that they have to pay, whether it's one day, two days, and then after that period, the system will generate an email to you listing the people that have registered for the specific number of days and have not paid so that you can go in and delete their registrations. You can also request additional reports. Each Sage can have a custom report emailed in a custom schedule. They can come weekly, daily. You can report on the current number of registration or session counts. So how many people have registered for your event? How many people, people have registered for each session? We can also generate a report uh, for sessions that are nearing capacity if there are five or less spots. And this may trigger you as a group to decide to move that session to a larger room and then increase the capacity for that session so that more people can attend. We can also generate alerts to registrants or to you as a SAGE for anyone that went through the registration process but chose no sessions to attend. There will be a survey coming out um, from us to allow you to indicate which additional reports you want, whether you want unpaid notifications, basically all of the custom features I talked about, whether you wish to enable them or not for your event. Lastly, we'll talk a little bit about testing your event. Now, just a partial list of the things that are included in the testing that you're going through is confirming that your event registration is accessible, making sure all the text, the titles, dates and times are correct, verify that session choices and costs and session choices appear as you expect them to appear. You verify that the registration fees are correct on all items that incur a cost. And you verify that payments are processed as expected. So you'll be walking through the entire registration process during this testing up to and including paying for your registration with a credit card. After that is done, you also test issuing a refund as well as canceling registration and then modifying the registration to make sure that they all work as expected. What's important during this testing is that if any tests were to fail, you should reach out to MTS as soon as possible to help us work through how we correct whatever has failed during testing. The testing scripts will be provided to you after you have submitted your completed program for setup in the system. Once your program is set up in the system, you'll get the testing script and then it'll list the kind of four parts for each of the tests. What steps to perform, what you expect for a result, and what is the result of that test. The test will look something like this, where you can see this is a login test and where you're expecting to see if you click and what you're expecting for results if you forgot your password and how it runs. Marking in the spreadsheet whether a test pass, failed, or not valid, or not run is not really important as we would expect if any were to fail that you'd be contacting us immediately. If you have any questions about the online registration system or about this presentation, 
please contact me directly at my email address shown on this slide.